Well, we all know what the word is when you need to make a picture frame. Larry, there you go. So actually we now have a better way to do it. Larry Manning has been the pioneer in using this underpinner, so we're going to let him uh, demo the steps he needs to get pretty good joints here. This is the Cassis C89 underpinner. That's the official name of this. We're going to use this to put together the frames. This is a uh, modern translation, a real good English translation, of the manual for the Cassis underpinner. I recommend that you at least go through this once before you ever use the machine for the first time. If, in fact, you're still kind of in a quandary as to how to use the machine, please feel free to look myself up or look up Randy Spitzer. We both have gone through uh, the wars with this machine and would be more than welcome to help you. This will be located with the machine. There's also one in the maintenance facility. We, know, we do know that, based on experience, you should still put a little light coating of glue between the faces before you use the underpinner staples. To get the underpinner, you need to bring it to an air source in the, in the workshop. We've chosen this one back in the assembly area because it was convenient. We'll connect that to the air jack the way we'd normally connect it to any other air uh, tool here in the, in the workshop. The next thing we need to do is turn the air on. And then we must verify that the gauge on here is showing five or six on the readings. If it's over six, the chances are that you'll damage the machine. If you need to adjust that, the knob here, in fact, will adjust that. Now note, this is an on-off switch. It's an on-off type of a switch that you can, if you don't have air initially, you'll bring it up to the vertical position and the air goes on. It's much like the valves on our air hoses. Next, you need to get out the control feature for that. This is a foot pedal operated. It has a safety cover on it in yellow. The actual pedal is inside the cover. On the back of the unit, we have a stop for the hammering to get go against. We'll have it out of the way initially prior to putting the wood in that. On the underpinner, we have several different things. First of all, there will be a shoulders that the sides of your frame will connect to. These are shown here with kind of in gray. They do rotate, and that's in case the side of your frame is not exactly straight up and down. That's so you can get a good fit. They're both adjustable, and we'll get to that as we set up wood in there. We have the slide that pulls and holds the wood tight inside to the, the frame prior to nailing it. We also have the, the over the hammer that allows the hammer to have something to hit against as it drives home the staples. Finally, in the center of this item right here, you'll see a V, and that's where the staple comes up. So if that's where the, the actual item will come in, and we'll use that to decide how, where our stops will go. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to establish that, in fact, this is square. The two sides of this are square. 
simply taking a square from the tool room uh, wall. We can put that in there, verify that square. And the wood we're going to use today has nice straight up and down edges. So I'm going to roll these side shoulders up tight, tighten them down like so. The left hand arm of this shoulders is, can move, but it's set up to be maxed out at a square stop. This, uh, this would be a little more advanced adjustment if you decide that part of your frame needs to be uh, changed, this adjustment needs to be changed on it. The next thing we need to do is we take two of our pieces of wood uh, that we're going to use and we put it in here so that we have a, a line up and we can tell that the edges of the shoulders in fact are lining up smoothly against our wood. This is where if the outside edge of your wood was somehow curved and you needed to get a tighter fit you would adjust the shoulder. Now then we need to kind of determine where our, our staples are going to go into. So let's take away one side and we're going to look in here and we're going to see where the staples coming up and I would, I'm going to make a choice of putting one staple here and one further back. So this particular staple right here is the furthest up this is going to go this way. I could, if I chose to, put a mark on the pen right here on the pen wood to help you to do that, but you can see where the staple would go into. Using the far the far adjustment, we pull it all the way forward and this allows, this won't allow the, the uh, slide to come any further back towards the rear. So that establishes the first stop. Let's tighten that down. Now then, let's move this forward and find another place where we'll put the staple. I'm going to choose a spot right about here. At that point, I can bring this other stop in here and make it tighten down right here where this particular stop is. So you see now, with those two stops, I'm limited to those two places. The question might come up in your mind, what if I wanted a third staple in here? You can simply do one in halfway in between. But you know that once you put the other piece of wood there and you can't see where it's happening, that the maximum that way is still on the wood and the maximum this way is still on the wood. Now this is a, this is a way that we can be more precise. If you're looking to be just a little more riskier, we have mar made two marks on the sides here in black felt, felt tip marker. One, there's one there, and there's one on the other side. And these are approximately in line with where the staple will come out. And so as we can use that as, as part of our movement, we can see about where, looking at those marks, about where that staple will come out into our wood. Let's go ahead and see if we can't staple these items together. I put it into, this, into the item and I move forward now with my holder and I push that forward till it touches. It doesn't have to be hard touch because you're going to see as you depress your foot pedal that this will come forward and actually make a really tight fitting in here. We need to tighten that and we'll want to now move to one of our stops. Where I moved to the one most of the rear. Making sure that the wood is pushed up and tight in there as we can. I'm now going to bring the hammer over that. And the hammer does not have to touch the wood. In fact, you can't slide to the next stop if it is. But it must be within 50 millimeters, or approximately what you see there, from the wood. And let's tighten the hammer down right here. We almost got the cart before the horse. We didn't have any staples in that machine, so we're taking an opportunity now to show you the types of staples. This particular device we have was a, a purchased used item from the camera club, as I'm led to believe here, a photography club in, in Sun City. It's, as far as we can tell, no longer produced, but we're going to be looking for other parts and other staples. There are several, I believe about eight types of staples that will go with this. We are the owners of three of the staples. We look here at our example. The, Pink car uh, cartridge has the shortest staple in it, and you can see the length of it right there. The blue cartridge, a bit longer staple. And I'm sorry, the term that they French use on this is wedges. And then finally, for the really thick frame, the white cartridge has this very long wedge that goes in there.
To make the device work, we have to put a cartridge in it. And it's best for you to decide what happens, what size you need. It is possible if you have varying thicknesses in those two stops or three places you want to stop, to sink a second staple behind the first one. So you could start, if you have very thin wood on one part of that, you could use the pink all the way through, but where it's thicker in the wood, you hit it once, then you hit it again, and it'll drive the second wedge right behind the first one. This is using the uh, single staple, and then because it's thicker here, we hit it twice, and the second staple went right behind that. The key there is we can't move from the stop at that position. We go right behind it at that point. The machine is ready to go, with the exception of not having any staples in this. If you'll notice, one end, the staples are there, and then much like a stapler in your house, that goes to the front to get, it has to have something pushing behind, so there's a little ball on the back, and so we pull that back to the rear. We can insert the cartridge till it fully is up there to the very front, as far as it'll go underneath this edge right here. We can let go of the ball, and it'll push the, the, staple, the wedge pusher up. The item is now fully ready to go. One last check. We tightened up against the wood. We're at the far end of our stops. We have pressure on. It's in the right place. And so now I'm going to push my foot in this. Before I do that, I want to let you know, it's like taking a picture these days with cameras. The slight push gives you the focus. A full push causes the picture to take. Here, a slight push will lock in everything, and the rest of the push will hit a staple. You do not need to leave your foot down too long, or they'll be setting more than one staple. So as I go through this first thing, watch closely, slight push. You may have noticed that. This bottom part locked in. Let's do that again. It just locked in. For the rest of the push, it came down, it sunk the staple, this came down and held the wood in while it sunk that. Let's move it to the other stop. We'll do that again. Make sure the wood's tight, slight push. Now, I had noticed that the wood had slightly fallen apart before I did that, and so I wanted to make sure it pushed back together. And as I do that, those two staples, or wedges, now are in the back of the wood, and this is in good shape. Ideally, I would have glued this priorly. Depending on the width, maybe a third one would have been in order. I want to reiterate that we need to put some glue in these items. Let's take this smaller piece of wood here. And this may only require one staple just to hold it together. And, if, and think in terms of this, the, the wedge or staple actually serves the, the same thing as our clamps do. It's holding the wood together and that's why the glue is important. From personal experience, I know that using wedges only has led to me to have to come back and glue it. For example, when I put it in the machine, and by the way, you are responsible for making sure the two points of the wood are exactly to the, even with each other. The machine will not do that. Secondly, once I move my support up there, my holder in there, if I push in and do the one staple, and if I had not used the glue, it's conceivable that as I take this apart, and as especially as this gets longer, longer out here, you're having a, and the term, physics term is a moment arm pulling those apart, that one staple can't allow the wood to pull apart and you really can't get it back together because that's kind of has spring steel in there, okay? You'll find yourself back into the regular clamping world when you do that. The other thing is, oh, you say, wow, at this point, I should have put another staple in there. Well, if you stick it in and immediately hit another staple in there, you will, in fact, possibly hit the staple that's in there incorrectly and it can cause damage to the machine. It's better to maybe move it up a little further, show you're sure you're not on that particular staple, or think ahead of before you do this and say, maybe it's better to have a couple more beforehand than just one. I'd recommend a, a two-point load as a minimum for stapling all these and then go up to three if you have a really wide frame. Let's go back over this pressure plate, the proper terminology for this item up front. Again, this comes, we cut it close to the wood, we lock it down, and when we engage the machine, it automatically goes down and holds when the, when the uh, wedge is driven in. 
Now, you'll notice that the foot on this pressure plate in this particular case is of white plastic. We can take this item out of here and you'll see that this particular white plastic, this is good for softwoods, in our case pine, poplar. We have another one in the kit here that's good for the hardwoods and that's the black one right here. We'd put that in place we we'll use that if we are going to have a hardwood. And once again, you'll notice that as this is over the wood, we want to make sure that the flat edge is towards us and the pointed edge is to the rear, just like the picture frame would be. Finally, if you have a non-flat surface on the molding or the side of the picture frame, Cassis provides this particular uh, foot and it will hold in, in less of a, a place not allowing possibly to rock and roll with the flat plate and down in one spot that would go for that for a non-flat surface. I'm, I finally finished getting my frames done. We didn't really discuss the alternate frame corners because we didn't have the long pieces of wood. But ideally the way I've seen it in one of Cassis's videos is, is they took two of the pieces of wood, did them together. They then got the other two pieces of wood did them together and finally off they had two V's like that then they took the remaining corners to that and to here. If you have a really really long piece and you see that you're having problems with the wood trying to not stay flat, not stay where it belongs, you might consider one of the rollers we use for the out feeds of the, of the, the jointers uh, or the in feeds of the table saws. So I'm done now, I'm ready to put this fellow away. First thing I can do is, let's be safe, let's turn off the air. Next thing you want to do is take the staples out. And lay them aside. You might also be very gentle with these. If you drop them and they break, these little staple wedges just get everywhere. So now we have the system. It still has air charged into it. Let's push the pedal down a couple of times. Holding it down, the air goes out until it releases and comes up. We know the air is out of the system. We can put away the foot controller. We can remove our air hose. Roll our air hose up, put away the cassis tool. But that is the cassis S89 underpinner at work.